will it. Who here loves bread? Lean to your neighbor and say, I love bread. <laughs> Amen. So in the book of John, there's seven verses that show us descriptions that Jesus used to answer a question that we all have probably asked. And so some of those descriptions are the bread, their light, they're the gate, shepherd, resurrection, and life, the way, the truth, and life, and the vine. But I want to touch on just the first one, and that's bread. Bread is so delicious. I have some today at church and then after church. <laughs> so I love that Jesus used earthly pictures to help us understand heavenly truths. One of the gifts that God gave to us was our imagination. So when I say when I say it like that, maybe you can picture a rainbow. Imagination. Does anybody see a rainbow? <laughs> and another gift that God gave to us was our five senses. We can see, we can hear, we can taste, we can touch, and we can smell. And so as we go through this journey together for the next four or five hours, <laughs> just joking, um, we'll do our best to activate these six things together. We can travel back to another time, or we can travel to any other place that we want if we just use our imagination as vividly as possible. And the amazing thing is God is in these experiences. So here, we'll travel back to a time and a place where God spoke through his only begotten son, Jesus the Christ. So why did God send Jesus? It's because God wants to be known. He loved being with Adam and Eve and talking with them and walking with them in the cool of the evening while they were still in the garden. Even after they sinned, they tried to hide inside their shame, but God came looking for them. I've committed a ton of sins in my life and I've been what you could probably call a horrible example of a human being because I'm human and I'm a sinner. But I've always noticed that God came chasing me down and finding me because God wants to be known by us. We see in the Old Testament that he spoke through various prophets. And we also see that he spoke to Abraham and to Moses. And his message was always, I want to be known by you. He stopped speaking through the prophets and angels. And he started speaking directly to us. We see in Exodus 3.13 that God speaks to Moses when Moses asks him, who do I say sent me when they ask, who are you? And God replied, I am. And this pops back up in the New Testament when Jesus uses the same two words and our five senses to describe us a very clear image of who God is. But let's be clear. God does not say that he is the already have or the I will be. God describes himself as the I am. The, he is the present. He is the right now. And another translation that I found is that I will be there as I will be there. So now as we meditate on the word now, we can think about some of our humanly needs. Have you guys had dinner yet? No. So one of our humanly needs might be, this guy needs to shut up and I'll be. <laughs> and some of our other humanly needs might be, I'm thirsty. We also have a great need to feel important, to feel worthy, to feel wanted, and to feel like we have a purpose. Even people who are not Christians, who don't believe in a God, they often wonder, is there a God? They wonder about creation, and they need light to see. We all yearn to be led, and some of us yearn to lead. All of these combined into one simple word. We have a need to live. So let's 
let's turn to the first I am statement from Jesus, the Bible verse that I started the service with, and that's John 6.35, and then it says, Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. So once again, if you love bread, turn to your neighbor and say, I love bread. <laughs> I love bread. <laughs> And there's another translation that reads, they will be satisfied. <clears throat> so first, by equating himself, Jesus, with bread, Jesus is saying he is essential for life. And second, the life that Jesus is referring to is not physical, not the flesh, but eternal life. Jesus is trying to get us thinking of the physical realm and into the spiritual realm. And that's one of the things that God has, has been so gracious with. We can't understand heavenly things because we're limited with our humanly thinking. And so he uses pictures like the body of Christ or the bread of life to help us understand things that are beyond our own thinking. So why thinking in the physical realm, let's use our six gifts to meditate on bread. Can you imagine the smell of freshly baked bread? Mm. Yes. It smells oaty, or that's the only word I can think of. It just smells good, right? And it's in the oven, it's baking, it's warm. Mm. But then it comes out of the oven and it cools off just a little bit. You pick it up, and it's soft to the touch, right? It's squishy, and then you take a bite. It's chewy, and it's so delicious. I love bread. It's comforting, it's filling. The top is brown and sometimes kind of, kind of crunchy, but the inside, it's white in the middle, and so soft and delicious. Now think about your favorite dish, your all-time favorite meal that you've ever had in your entire life. And who here loved to cook? Yes. Think about the, the hours of preparation that you spent preparing the meal and the time that it was cooking and just waiting to serve that to your family and to enjoy the deliciousness of that. Maybe you'd like to fry something on the skillet. Listen to that sizzle. I can't do the sound of sizzle, but you can picture the sound, I guess, imagine the sound of the sizzle in your mind, right? How many senses can you use? You can use all of them. You can taste in your imagination. You can smell in your imagination. You can see in your imagination. You can touch in your imagination. And you can hear inside your imagination. You can use your imagination to go to another time and another place. And just think about that first bite. Your favorite meal, you take that first bite. Pure satisfaction. You look around and you see your family taking that first bite. And they say, mmm, mom, that's so good. Mmm, grandma, that's delicious. And then they eat that whole plate. They get the perfect proportion. You eat just enough and you're satisfied. Right? Now coming to Jesus gives us that same satisfaction, but even greater, greater satisfaction than your favorite meal you get from coming to Jesus. Because it's not a physical feeling, but a spiritual feeling, and it's for eternity. So third, I want us to notice the words, come and believe. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. So this is an invitation for those listening and hearing to place their faith in Jesus as the Messiah and Son of God. The invitation to come is found throughout the entire Gospel of John. Coming to Jesus involves making a choice 
uh, uh, to forsake the world and follow him. Believing in Jesus, believing in Jesus means placing our faith in him, that he is who he says he is, that he is the great I am, and that he will do, and that he is the only one who can. So we find eternal life in heaven through Jesus Christ. And does anybody here know Pastor Harold Jones, the pastor of United Methodist Church in Monroeville? I know him, but yeah. Such an amazing man of God. And he said today in our church service there at the Monroeville United Methodist Church, he said that Jesus prayed, your, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And so we can have heaven right where we're at, right now, and it'll go on for eternity, forever and ever. So let us make a choice to place our faith in Jesus today and every day on. And if you will, please pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, you are so good and so gracious and so loving. And we, we just pour out our love and adoration for you, Father God. We thank you that you came to us in a physical form through your son, Jesus Christ. And Lord, we just, we just thank you for the gifts that you've given us, our imagination and all of our five senses and the ability to go to another place at another time. And most of all, we thank you that you help us to understand things that are heavenly, that are beyond us through physical, worldly pictures. And we just know that you are the bread of life and that we come to you right now for satisfaction. We come to you for that eternal life in heaven. And so if there's anybody in this room that has not given their life to you, that has not given their trust to you, we just, we just lift them up in prayer. We say, dear Heavenly Father, we come to you, we accept you as our Savior. We love you, we proclaim that you are God, and that we will have eternal life in you. Let your kingdom be, got, be done right here on earth. We welcome heaven right now in our own bodies, in our own facility. And we just love you so much. We praise you. We hold you up high. You are a holy God. And we pray all these things in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. So is everybody on page 100? Now here, this is a really popular song, The Old Rugged Cross. Does anybody like that song, The Old Rugged Cross? Yeah. <laughs> yeah.